Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. This is our first episode, and I hope you all enjoy it. Um, the audio is a little bit rough, so do bear with us as we work out all the kinks, but the content was too good not to share. Um, so this is my husband, Tony, and our good friend, Yenny, talking what they do all the time, movies. So let us know what you think. You can find us at the Facebook page, Tony the Movie Guy, and also you can email us ideas or your opinions. We welcome everything, even criticisms, um, and that's at Tony the Movie Guy Podcast at gmail.com. Hope you enjoy it. All right, hi guys. So uh, my name's Tony Langley. Uh, those who do follow my Facebook page, I'm Tony the Movie Guy. Um, and I thought I would try something out here and do a, a podcast. I thought it might be kind of fun. I've uh, got one of my uh, close friends, uh, Yenny Brainard, with me. Hi, Yenny. Hey. And uh, Miss Money Yenny. <laughs> and um, so the reason I thought this would be a good idea is obviously there's so many podcasts out there about, you know, movies, films, entertainment and stuff like that. And I don't, don't want to, didn't want to do just kind of like the same thing that everyone else does. Um, but you know, like six, seven years ago, I ran a blog for a long time. I did like, you know, movie reviews and quizzes and I did different lists and things like that. And, you know, gained quite a following. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. And then I've had a, a Facebook page for a while, but my friends always come to me asking me about films and stuff. Yanni is smiling, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, anyway, we just have a huge passion for everything film, everything entertainment. So I thought maybe we'd do some, something kind of uh, fun here and just kind of go off and not really stick to an exact format and see how that goes. Um, but really discuss, um, you know, just the love of movies and celebrate movies and um you know discuss different topics and things like that and hopefully you guys will enjoy it you know if you're you're working and you know you've got your headphones in and you need a distraction or you're driving uh this you know this uh banter might help and you know also you know i'm british and yenny is uh strangely enough uh german british um <laughs> but uh you know and, and we both live in los angeles so there you go yeah. um but anyway um yeah, why don't you kind of share a little bit of why you think this might be a fun idea and hopefully we won't send people to sleep. Yeah, so um, Tony is sort of what I call my, my movie friend. I mean, we've been buddies for a really, really long time. We go That's back it? And... I'm your movie friend? You're my movie friend. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all you're useful for. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> See, now the truth is revealed. Sorry, continue. Um, but no, we've been uh, buddies for a really long time, but it, you know, the, the minute we sort of started hanging out in LA, we started doing movie nights, and um, I have come to Tony on almost everything I've ever uh, thought of watching from TV shows to films. I will text him when I have a random thought of, ooh, this looks good, Tony, should I watch this? And he'll literally know um, who the director is, what has already what the buzz has been about that film already he'll know the trailer he'll he'll be like yeah maybe this that and the other and he just you know it's full of so much information always and it's useful and fun and i love his, uh, the style of his reviews on his facebook page because they're actually you know the, the positive as well as the negative and it really um is honestly like for me 85 90 percent accurate to my own opinions Anyway. 85 to 90 percent yeah pretty pretty good I'll, I'll take that i'll take that <laughs> you know it's true actually though as well because also i mean part of the reason why i started reviewing films and critiquing films and people from all over people i don't even know mm -hmm. like message me out of nowhere and ask me about films is so many of the reviews and critics you you read mm -hmm. are just so depressing awful you know they're so i mean even if the bad even if the movie is genuinely bad i know they're so like condescending yeah. and so it's like this is the worst piece of shit ever made yeah. it's just a movie this film destroyed my life yeah or, or unfortunately the you know the academy which is a great example just seems to love the most depressing films yeah. Yeah. or another thing is 
the, a lot of these critics write like they're like Shakespearean, you yeah. know, literary, you know, majors, you know, yeah. which I am not, as you can tell. And, and you can't even understand half of what they're saying. Exactly. So, like, I just like, you know, simple, you know, reviews for the general layman. You know, is it a good film? Is it fun? You know, is, is, is this a movie that's looking to be serious or dramatic yeah. and trying to win an award? Or is it just a good time? Yeah. Or, you know, it's like... date night movie. Yeah, if someone gives Dumb and Dumberer a bad review, <laughs> I mean, why are they watching it? Anyway, yeah. I thought it was really funny, you yeah, know? It's exactly. stupid. It's yeah. dumb. Yeah. That's why it's called Dumb and Dumberer, you know what I mean? Or, you know, if you're reviewing Schindler's List, then that right. deserves more respect in terms of really breaking... You I mean, down. unlike me, who said, I don't like that film because it's depressing, and you laughed yeah. at me because you're like, well, it's Schindler's List. Yeah, or what s- exactly did you expect? Right, or scarily enough, my wife, Daniela, Schindler's List has become like her favorite movie because she goes, oh, goodbye, Jews, <laughs> and she keeps saying it to me nonstop, it's deeply disturbing, and she's staring at me from the office right now, so I'm in trouble. <laughs> What's absolutely hilarious about that is, yeah. Anyway, that's if she, if she said that around me, she knows I'd be heavily offended. Yeah. Just well, kidding. she she doesn't mean any offense, please. No. But right now, this is just banter. But um, no, I mean, I really, I really like just talking to people who have a love of movies like you do and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and really celebrating the joy of it and going over different things and yeah so you know this is a selfless uh, plug but I do have just a little Facebook page Tony the movie guy where I do a lot of you know reviews and ask questions and kind of try and utilize Facebook in a, a more pleasant way than all the you know crap and politics that gets put on there but um yeah so we're, we're not going to stick to an exact format but I, I think we'll discuss certain films. We'll go over like movies coming out and yeah. things like that. Um, you know, so I thought... on that note, for the rest of the year, what do you think? Um, I know, I know. There's a list of yours that you've given me that you are really excited about. But in terms of what you like the most, I mean, okay, like what do you think is going to be the most blow away, like powerful film that's still to come out this year? Okay, well, that's obvious. There's only one answer to that okay, question. Okay, take away Star Wars off okay, the table. Okay, So you know that. So <laughs> I am a huge Star Wars fan. Beyond huge. The, yeah, huge. I'm staring at his Star Wars salt shakers right now. Right, and we have Star Wars Lego everywhere, which coincidentally enough uh, actually belongs to my wife, not me. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm a, Best a, Lego I'm a devout fan of the original trilogy not the prequels although i will say it's funny that the younger generation actually a lot of them prefer the the, you know the prequels and you know the first one was okay second one Mm. i think is terrible Mm. the the third one i actually don't mind it's disjointed but i i enjoy it but anyway the force awakens for me you can nitpick it all you want I loved it. I saw it five times in the theater. I was standing in line. The first person literally in line to watch it when it opened here in uh, Burbank. Oh, yeah, you were. You were in your t-shirts, and I went to get you drinks while you waited in line for two hours. Yeah, five hours, I think it was, was, wasn't it? Something like that. It was a long time. Um, But anyway, so, uh, so The Force Awakens to me, and, you know, just kind of going on a tangent on that. That's a really interesting point of view. And actually, critics were very kind to that. And since yeah. it made $2.2 billion, most people loved it. But there were a lot of people who was like, oh, they're just copying everything from the original. Of course they were. It was over 30 years ago. Yeah. They took everything, all the nostalgia, brought yeah. it up. The reason yeah. it worked is they did that so well, and then with all the practical effects. And then at the same time, they introduced new characters you could actually love and get invested in. Yeah. So anyway, The Force Awakens, I absolutely love. So yes, The uh, the Last Jedi, I am super excited about. Yeah. I can't wait for that to come out. Sure. I'm sure I'll be watching that several times. Um, there's a few films coming out towards the end of the year that I think... Um, are there know, any I'm, that are sort of... Okay, so we've obviously got things like Kingsman, uh, Force Awakens, things like that. Any that... Uh, maybe not so much on people's radars that you've heard about that you think might surprise people. Like, I mean, a a good example, as you've uh, talked to me about, is it just blew the box office away and that was not expected. Well, I'll tell you, actually, American Made, because I saw the the pre-screening. My friend uh, David, who I'll probably have a guest on this, uh, got... Uh, you know, tickets for us to go to a pre-screening and then uh, promptly he didn't 
show up. So I went and saw it on my own nice. like a year ago. Um, and that, that's a Tom Cruise uh, movie. That's quite um, sad on your own in the movie theater. No, actually, I, I don't. I, li- <laughs> I love watching movies on my own. That's what's funny. I'm completely like zoned, zoned in. I loved it. That's but anyway, I was really surprised with that film because A, I, I love Tom Cruise. I think he's a fantastic yeah. actor. Um, but one thing that has bugged me is he's kind of fallen into that action star niche. And right. it really aggravates me when people go, oh, yeah, he's just an action star. I'm like, watch Magnolia. Watch right. Rain Man. Watch right. Taps. I mean, the dude can act. Yeah. See, I'm really not that British. I'm saying dude, <laughs> you know. Um, but um, that this is one of his best performances I've seen in years. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, even though he's still kind of like the hotshot fighter pilot, he plays this uh, drug smuggler from the 80s, a real life character called uh, Barry Seal. Yeah. Um, yeah it's I'm a, really excited about that too. My husband can't wait. It's a fascinating story. It's directed by Doug Lyman, who did Edge of Tomorrow, which ah, was Ah, that's fantastic. why he'll love it. We right. love Edge of Tomorrow. I've right. seen it five times. It was an amazing movie. Horrible title. Yeah. Amazing. They should have just kept it Awful. to the original. All you Which need is kill. All you need is kill. I guess better. the studios didn't want. Well, that's the name of the comic book it's based on. Oh. Um, but that film was fantastic. Um, and uh, American Made, I really, really enjoyed. It's deeply funny, like really funny, awesome. very tense at times. Uh, and it's his best. It's Cruz's best performance in, really? in years. So um, I actually wouldn't be surprised if it might get some. Uh, Academy Award buzz we'll see it comes out in a few weeks September 29th but that's a film that I think might surprise people yeah obviously Kingsman I'm very excited for Um, you know my wife's very excited because it's got her trifecta dream Boyfriends of Colin Firth, Channing Tatum, and Taron Egerton. So, it's got to be you know, the best she's yeah. Ever. Thor looks like super fun to me. Right. Uh, oh, uh, Blade Runner. Blade so Runner. So I, I am deeply invested in Blade Runner. So yes. Blade Runner is like my fa- favorite science fiction movie of all time. I have probably to tell you something. You're not Star like. Wars is probably the only thing above that. Go ahead. Uh, the original Blade Runner, I didn't really like. You watched it with me again, remember? I and you didn't like, like it. it. I know. It's, but I have to like the new one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. Number one, when that film came out, I hadn't seen anything like it. Mm-hmm. The atmosphere of the original Blade Runner, um, with, uh, directed by Ridley Scott, Harrison Ford, obviously, um, was just like nothing I'd ever seen before. Also, I, God, I must have been like seven or eight when I watched it. Oh, wow. And it's like an R-rated, very atmospheric movie, and Rod Kahauer is incredible in it. Um, you know, as the, the villain, and such an amazing role. So that film has always stuck with me, and I've watched it growing up. And it, when it came out, it was a bust. It was a commercial flop and a critical flop. Now it's acclaimed as literally the greatest or one of the greatest science fiction movies of all time. But I'm really excited for that because one, it's Harrison Ford coming back. The only thing I'm worried about is he seems to want to kill off all of his beloved characters. Uh... Spoilers if you haven't seen The Force Awakens, but you've had <laughs> several years, so come on. Yeah. Um, but he's coming back. Ryan Gosling, who I absolutely love. He's one of my favorite actors. Um, and the funny thing is, I loved Ryan Gosling before he was who? Ryan Gosling. Me too. I, I okay. fell in love with Ryan Gosling from a film called Half Nelson, mm-hmm. which is a little-known indie film about drug addiction, which he was just phenomenal in. Um, but anyway, he's starring in it, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but the You direct- mean you didn't fall in love with him in The Notebook? No, see, I don't like The Notebook at all. <laughs> Danny didn't even like The Notebook. I tried to make my wife watch that, and she was like, this is really stupid, you know. Um, and I'm sorry. I know a lot of people like it. It's, it's sweet, but yeah. Um, and I am a big rom-com guy, actually. I like good rom-coms. Yeah, you know, Tony's lo- actually, that's one of the things I forgot. Why you're my friend. You're actually able to watch rom-coms with me. Notting Hill, Love yeah, Actually, Four Weddings and a Funeral. A lot of British ones, but even like The Wedding Singer and Fifty yeah. First Dates, yeah. early Sandler stuff. Um, and then he kind of went off the deep end. But anyway, so what, what was I talking about? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the director is Denis Villeneuve or something. Um, but he did Sicario, and he did <gasps> Prisoners, and oh, he I did and movies. he did Arrival. See, this is the yeah. stuff Tony knows. Where I'm like, yeah. oh, this is why I like this film. I loved. Well, I did not love Arrival. I loved the other two. Yes, I'm gonna go on a tangent now. I hated it Arrival. It, no, but it was so weird because. That was one of the rare times where I just so was not tuned in. Like, mm-hmm. critics loved it. A lot I of know. people absolutely loved it. Got Oscar nominations. I thought it was so boring, was so, so boring. pretentious. Yeah. I spotted the twist. Spoilers, but Me I'm too. not going to say what it is. Right From at the beginning. beginning. Yeah. Uh, Amy Adams was good in it. But yeah. that was it. It was yeah, so was it. boring. And people loved it. And I was just like, what am I, I missing? Know. But outside of that, um, Sicario was, was fantastic. And... Prisoners. I saw it three times. Prisoners was one of those. Yeah, and that was one of those films that just kind of. 
came out of the, you know, the left side or whatever the term is, you know, and just kind of yeah. surprised people because it was so good. Yeah, it was, it was really so good. well acted and so Jake intense. Jake Gyllenhaal was incredible. In Such that an film. underrated actor. Right. Yeah, well, he's coming. So there's some, you're asking about films yeah. that might surprise me. There's a lot of films that haven't really been released yet that are going right. to go into Oscars. So Blade Runner is a big one for me that I, okay. I, um, I'm nervous and apprehensive, but it seems like it's in very good hands and the trailers look phenomenal the atmosphere the mood the the music yeah. um it looks fantastic so i'm very very excited for that um but there are some oscar films so there's a, a film that hasn't really been advertised much a trailer did drop it's called stronger okay. and that's with jake gyllenhaal oh, uh, and the girl from orphan black yeah i just saw uh tatiana mesley uh, yeah. okay Mesley. disclaimer yeah. please don't kick our ass or be mean to us on names we're gonna get better at this this is we'll work the format but she uh she you know i'm a massive fan of orphan black i'm just starting season five which is the final season as an actress whether you watch orphan black or not she's excellent she right. plays nine different characters in that show yeah that are all completely different i saw an episode world. and it looked good there's just so much tv to yeah. watch now i can't keep but up. uh my point was that that marriage or uh, that coupling in a film excites me because yeah. I love her and I absolutely adore Jake Jones. Well, remember The Patriot? Yeah. Which, yeah. Um, or Patriot's Day, sorry, oh, with yeah, Mark yeah. Wahlberg. I thought that film was so mismarketed as like a so Mark Wahlberg action vehicle. That film blew me away. It was brilliant. Yeah, it was about I the... I watched it because of you. Right, it was about the Boston bombings, the yeah. marathon bombings a couple years brilliant ago. Done. And maybe it was too soon for a lot of people because it didn't do well. It was so well done. Yeah, it's it, brilliant. You know, it was directed by Peter Berg, who's kind of an action-y guy, and the action was intense, but the emotion, the, the drama, drama the, yeah. the story was incredible. And... and um, it's about the two people who, who the, the couple. At the right, front so line. this is like a spin off story because right. he's, that's one of the guys who lost his legs or something. Right. Yeah. And I think that character is actually in the movie yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but that's who Jake Gyllenhaal plays. Anyway, Jake Gyllenhaal is, I mean, Nightcrawler, Prisoners, yeah. right. obviously Brokeback Mountain, um, Donnie Darko, which is one of my favorite, like, yeah. you know, cult classic independent movies. He, he's an actor who. Absolutely has had an Oscar long time coming. So that could be a film that um, might really surprise people. Oh, The Darkest Hour, Winston Churchill, Gary Oldman. I, Did you see the trailer? I have not seen the trailer. Oh, Why have you not shown me the fantastic. trailer? <laughs> it looks fantastic. So Gary Oldman is one of oh, my favorite actors absolutely. of all time. And actually, I think everyone loves Gary Oldman. How can you not love Gary Oldman? He's incredible. But you know what's weird? He was never nominated for an Oscar until a couple of years ago for Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. Which was a great movie. It was good. I, it was liked over, I did. I liked it, but it's not a rewatchable, like, you yeah. know. And actually, his role was quite subdued in it. But, I mean, he, he is incredible. Sid and Nancy was amazing. Uh, I mean, Leon, the professional, to me, that's, he's one of the best villains ever in that movie and he's just done so many incredible films um and obviously commissioner gordon in the, in the and he was in, um, trilogy hitman's bodyguard just uh, gary oldman yeah he's, oh really he's the bad guy yeah so he shows he's up brilliant. In... he's a he's like a russian evil evil mobster and he's brilliant well i don't want to be mean because i love the guy dearly but he does seem to be kind of phoning it in on a lot of roles in the sure. recent years. You just kind of see him popping up and he's such an incredible actor. So when I heard about this many months ago, actually, I was like, oh, this is just perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just something, a, a role for him to really chew his teeth into and really just show because he's a real actor he's yeah. a character actor yeah. gary oldman yeah. he's incredible so hey he's playing winston churchill i mean the makeup Exciting. and prosthetics is incredible and i was reading an interview or watching an interview where emma thompson was saying it was amazing it was like she you know just now on the circuit of the movie being re um released she felt like she was just actually getting to know gary oldman for the first time wow. because she was talking to Winston Churchill. It was him, you know. Wow. But that looks incredible. And, and what's the release on that? Uh, mm -hmm. Probably the fall. You know, it's going to be um, a, that's that movie is going to be geared for awards season. And I, I he's a shoe in for a nomination. I guarantee it. Okay. And I would not be surprised if he wins Best Actor because it's a long term, long time coming. Okay. And Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, I haven't really heard the buzz yet, okay. but uh, I, I think he might get a nom. Um, there's another film uh, from Alexander Payne, who's like an Oscar favorite. He did Sideways. Okay. Um, and he did that um, George Clooney movie uh, in Hawaii. Do you oh, remember that movie? Um, I actually liked that film. And it had, um, um, uh, it had the girl from the, the teenage 
diary yeah, yeah, TV show. Yeah. Who um, she was actually quite good in that. Um, but anyway, he's got a film coming out called Sideways with Matt Damon. Do you okay. see the trailer for that? No, I didn't. Called Downsizing, where they like shrink themselves to like control the population of planet Earth. Oh, wow. Looks quite uh, interesting. Apparently, it had lukewarm reception at like the uh, uh, festival circuit. So we'll okay. see. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of blank on uh, all the other ones. I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff coming out, but I- I'd say Blade Runner. Um, I Kingdom is obviously. Blade Runner is the one I probably have my biggest fingers crossed on. Okay. To me, Star Wars is a lock. Last Jedi. I I, I don't think in any way I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah. You know, I'll either just think it's great or I'll be like, oh my god, it was even better than I possibly thought. Yeah. Because it's um, been a year. I mean, you and I have talked about it a few times. Of kind of. Um, some real disappointments like oh, we've yeah. had a really I don't know if maybe every year has been this bad but really like this year has been really <laughs> few and far between of decent films in the, yeah. in the cinema and let, let's talk about that for a bit actually because yeah. that's something that you and I have talked about and I've talked about that with a lot of people is um, and tell me listeners if, if you feel this way um, but in the, the last few years I get more and more disappointed going to the theatre, going to the cinema. Definitely. I used to be so pumped about going to see movies, and yeah. now I go to the, mo- uh, the theatre kind of just out of obligation, and even when the film's okay, I'm not blown away. Yeah. And, you know, and I have a bit of a problem. I watch like 10, 15, 20 movies a week, if not more. Sometimes I watch several movies a day. Wow. You know, it's a problem. <laughs> you know? um, and I, go, I used to go to the theatre like every single month or several yeah. times a month, and now I don't as much. And you're right, like this summer, so we had, okay, we had Gardens of the, uh, of the Galaxy 2, which I loved. That was great. I yeah. loved. And I'll tell you why I, mean, I loved it. It was just so fun. Yeah. It was great. so entertaining. Totally entertaining. Some people pick it apart. It, it was just so fun. No, I, great. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Logan at the beginning of the year. Uh, what was funny about Logan is I, I loved it, but God, I left depressed. Yeah, but even Logan, and I'm going to challenge you on that one for a minute, like I liked it, but it was... I mean, maybe, and this was the, and this is what I think quite a few people had on this film, is it? yeah, it was a bit slow, and it was, it, yeah, you left so depressed, and it just felt a bit, I don't know, honestly, I walked out feeling it was a bit disjointed, a bit like... Yeah. Oh. I mean, it was supposed to be like a kind of futuristic western type piece, and it was yeah. supposed to be a moody set piece, and the truth is, I don't disagree with you, because... It was heavy, yeah, and you left feeling just kind of, like, exhausted. But I still loved her. I thought it was so well done. He was incredible in it. The, the girl was... She was great. Fantastic. Yeah, she was very good. Um, Patrick Stewart, I thought, was heartbreaking as um, Professor X. Yeah. Um, so I, I loved that. Um, but now we're going way back early. But, like, you know, so that... Guardians of the Galaxy was fantastic, but then there was okay. Then there was the Mummy, which I mean, that was it was just an unnecessary remake. A lot of people blame yeah. it on Tom Cruise. It wasn't. I think it only made over four hundred million dollars because, because he it. was in it. I really do. It was because badly it, produced. Yeah, in my opinion. it tanked domestically. It made tons internationally because he's a huge draw internationally. Yeah, you know, which is kind of funny. I guess people don't judge as much <laughs> across the planet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and here's the thing about that film. That film got absolutely slaughtered yeah. it wasn't terrible oh, it was, I hated it I know you did but oh. it, it wasn't terrible it was a, a kind of a mildly I, entertaining and totally forgettable film but I'm just saying if you go back and watch the original ones with Brendan Fraser I even the first those. one watch it again though uh, it, I watched it a few months ago because I'm crazy and I watch movies <laughs> non-stop by the way I watch movies on repeat I watch the same movies over and over again. <laughs> so, and it, it was okay. It was fun. So, when I compare it, I'm like, come on. It wasn't the worst thing ever. Okay, you know? okay. That, that definitely is an over-exaggeration because there were some great action moments. There was... Right. I laughed possibly three times. There was some humor that worked and some that didn't. Absolutely. Some that really didn't where right. it flatlined, which made me cringe in my seat. And honestly, I'm a huge Tom Cruise fan like you, right. which is why I'm so... I had such high expectations right. going in because I am such a fan and oh, I've never that's been what it disappointed. Is, then. See, I, and then I came yeah. out like, Ugh. See, was- I never had high expectations. And then the trailers looked cool. And then Danny yeah. and I actually went to that whole mummy day that's in right. Hollywood and Highland. So we met the whole cast. We, we saw the whole virtual reality thing. And we went through like the mummy escape room and we got all pumped. Yeah. So... Then I was a little bit let down, but before that, I had no interest. So I was like, "This is to oh, me that was, was just pumped. unnecessary." Yeah. yeah, but anyway, so that was a stupid film. Transformers, 
Oh. Totally tanked. And, I mean, thank God. I mean, I, I'm sorry. So Michael Bay has just slaughtered that franchise. Mm. I really enjoyed the first one. Yeah. And here's what's weird. Now I actually miss Shia LaBeouf. And that's saying <laughs> something. I, no, I really do. Because he, he brought some spark to yeah. those original ones. I miss Megan Fox and Shia yeah. LaBeouf. That's saying something. <laughs> that's definitely saying You know, because Mark Wahlberg's, you know, uh, not, not a bad act, actor. But in this, it's just no, like, what? No. no. He's just... <laughs> Terrible in this film. Uh, anyway, so I didn't even watch it, by the way. Who are in these films? Who are these? They oh, just look like Barbies that can't say anything. Right, they just cast a, a hot-looking totty. But, um, but there's, anyway, there's, yeah. There are so many hot-looking totties that can still act. These girls literally just... They, they sound ridiculous, like like they're bad yeah. theatre actors. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, those films kept making money, 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 you know, like a billion dollars. Because the, the one Mark Wahlberg made before this, Age of Extinction, which I, I mean, that's, I saw it in the theatre and it was like head pounding. I was going numb. I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. I was just, it was just like shit being shoveled at me, you know, <laughs> so I couldn't like breathe. I was getting suffocated. Um, and the other ones before that were kind of dumb, but still somewhat bearable. Um, but it was still a huge hit. So yeah. thank God this one. And I hate to say it, I'm usually not so nasty, but thank God this one, so, I, they're going to stop the brakes a bit. Well, no, they're doing a freaking Bumblebee spinoff with oh, Hayley Stanfield. Well, I love Bumblebee. So, and she's a great actress, Edge of 17. She was oh, okay. fantastic yeah, she in was that. Good. So I'm excited to see where they go with that. But anyway, that was just schlock. So part of what the biggest problem has been this summer, but also in all the summers is remakes, repeats, yeah. sequels. So you've got, you had Transformers, that was a bust. Fast and Furious. Okay, well, I can't stand those anyway, right, but you know. let me pitch in for a minute there. As a fan of the Fast and Furious series up to now. You're a fan? Five, I am a fan. You're willing of, to document that willing, right now. Okay, Fast and Furious movies are stupid, funny, action, car, overly done films. And that's how I go to the theater thinking about them. But I, I have to say, up to number five, excluding, I think, Two, which was awful. The Tokyo Drift Run, which was awful. That's um, the one. That's the only one my wife liked. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked those films. Right. Six was just about, just about bearable. This last one was so utterly ridiculous. And this was eight. Seven was, was the one yeah, seven, which had to send off to Paul Walker. I saw that with you, which I actually I liked okay. the way they did the ending. That but the rest nice. of the film, I couldn't. The stand. rest of the film was like, yeah. yeah, okay. So that was the one that was like almost just about bearable. This last one, I fell asleep. Yeah. I had slept through half the film. It was awful. The premise was awful. The CGI was awful. Everything was absolutely awful. And uh, so I've heard something about they're going to do another one with them in space. Yeah, they're, they're just, here's the Ugh. problem with those right now. They're kind of like the Mission Impossible movies, but that on crack where, well, no, because the Mission Impossible movies, I think, actually got better as they went on and then okay. made more money. The Fast and the Furious movies just make more money, and but they're terrible. terrible. But they're making like a billion dollars. So it's unfortunately, ridiculous. it's a juggernaut and it will keep going, but whatever. Um, but yeah, that's another example of one I didn't yeah. even bother seeing. You saw it and yeah. you didn't even like it. So I, I mean, I left it to DVD, tank. but still. Right. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean as well. Oh, I, didn't I, didn't, I didn't see it. It did okay, again. Because, again, Johnny Depp, I think, is an international draw still. Yeah. Um, but personally, I, I, I've never really been into that franchise. The first one, I enjoyed. Because Depp was so quirky in it, and, and I yeah. liked that. And I love that he got his big break with that film, because he's been that great actor for so long. But yeah. yeah, so they did that. So you had Transformers, you had Mummy, Fast and the Furious. Um, um, oh, and then you had there. Baywatch, which busted. And, oh, it was awful. So you couldn't stand that, oh, right? Oh, it was so bad. It was actually... It was depressing and I sad. mean, what did they expect? The TV show was terrible, too. It was just gorgeous women. Here's the thing, though. The David Hasselhoff. <laughs> don't lie. Like, the preview at least looks somewhat charmingly funny, possibly. Like, The Rock. I like The Rock, The yeah. Rock is a great one. I, mean, I like Zac Efron. Zac Efron's done some good comedies recently. Yeah. He's hit or miss with me, but honestly, I thought I'd come in and at least have a few laughs. And, and honest, you didn't. Oh, the, 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 the acting. I mean, The Rock was... You felt sorry for both Zac yeah. Efron and The Rock that they were in this film. Yeah. Honestly, it was so badly, so badly done. And anyway, yeah. yeah so I never saw that. And then there was the snatched one with um, uh, the chick who did uh, Train Wreck, which I actually liked a lot. Oh um, yeah, I never saw it. And Goldie Horn, but that well, it didn't do well. That's what I'm saying. A lot of these well, right? films tanked. 
You know, so a, a lot of the movies and the theatre, and then here's the funny thing, even like the big ones, like, okay, Wonder Woman, I enjoyed. It was brilliant. You know, I, well, awesome. see, I didn't think it was brilliant, no, but I, I enjoyed it. it. Yeah. Because it was better than I, I was expecting. I'm yeah. not a Wonder Woman fan, particularly. Right. You know, obviously that film is very feminine driven, um, but that it was aside. Fun. No, that, yeah, that aside, it was actually a well done movie. And the, the, the lady, uh, Gal Gadot, was fantastic in yeah. it. And Chris Pine. That guy is so charming. Yeah. You know, so he charming. really is so charming. You know, he surprises me in films. Like, do you see Hello High Water from mm. last year? Nope. He's so good in that. My husband saw it, he loved it. Yeah, Ben Foster, yeah. another underrated actor, just so good. Um, but anyway, it was so charming. And so Wonder Woman I loved. Baby Driver was probably one of my most um, favorite brilliant. films of the summer. That yeah. just totally surprised me. Absolutely unique, original, funny. Fantastic John Ham. Yeah, John Ham was phenomenal yeah. in it. You know, I always thought he should have blown up to be a big A-list star after Mad Men. And he's always kind of had these side roles. but um, And unfortunately, he is in this film as well. But he was phenomenal. Jamie Foxx. Great, mm-hmm. great cast. Um, yeah, the soundtrack is great. Amazing. Anyway, so there's that. What other films were there this summer? So, oh, Spider-Man Homecoming was another one. Like, that was... Bad. Well, here's what's funny about that. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I think Tom Holland is one of the most accurate and enjoyable Peter Parker and Spider-Man's you know, okay. true to the comic books, because I grew up yeah. reading the comic books. Yeah. I actually like all of the Spider-Mans, Andrew Garfield, yeah, Tobey Maguire, I, I like them all. But he, I think he was the most true. And that film was enjoyable. Yeah. But here's what's funny. I walked out of the theatre and I totally forgot about it. Me too, totally. I just didn't remember it. You know, like, Logan I remember, Guardians of the Galaxy I remember because yeah. I really enjoyed it. Baby Driver I remember. Yeah. Oh, Dunkirk. So Dunkirk was probably my favourite film of the summer. I'm right. British. Um, but also, I just thought it was so incredibly done. It was uh, that film to me is a masterpiece. But it's a war movie. But I absolutely loved that movie. My wife is looking at our timer. <laughs> you know, we're at thirty minutes, and we're just doing a trial run. So you know, put the microphone, microphone between the two. Oh, okay. oh yeah, I probably can't hear Yenny at all because <laughs> you're way over there. Oh, that's right. But it's okay. This is just a trial run. But anyway, Dunkirk, you haven't seen that yet. I know. I've seen it three I times. I tried like three times, but it. Yeah. Just... And the pity about that film is it. It's weird. I watched it in normal theatre, and then I saw it in IMAX 70 millimeter, and it blew me away. Yeah. So I, I don't. I'm curious to see the reaction when it gets like a home release and things. Well, like. I'm gonna let make you at least let me watch it on your on nice big TV sexy screen. TV. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. Anyway, I love that movie. Um, I don't know what else came out this summer, but what did we have earlier than the summer? I guess, or in the sort of springtime. I don't know if there was anything even worth mentioning. Um, John Wick Two, which I enjoyed. Was, oh, yeah. I liked it, but it was again, entertaining. yeah, like the first one, I loved. loved. Good old yeah. Plug, good plug to Keanu, you know. That's nice brilliant. to see him still, you know, kicking ass. Um, but yeah, so I think what really we were talking about, we kind of went through a review of the summer, which is funny, but I don't know, Hollywood has gotten so lazy, yes. quote unquote, Hollywood, the studio, or whatever, and I'm not sure why. You know, there are certain, look, there are certain re- remakes and sequels where it really pays off. Like, remember 21 Jump Street? Everyone thought that was going to be the dumbest idea ever. Yeah. Who knew that Jonah Hill and Channing <laughs> Tatum would have such incredible chemistry? And yeah. Channing is, is legitimately funny. Yeah. You know, and that film was hilarious. And it's brilliant. And then the second one, I think, almost topped it. It was I awesome. loved the it second really one. Funny. You know what I mean? So then the studio goes, ooh, that was successful. Let's, you know, this, yeah. drudge up other things. And that's probably how, like, Baywatch, you know, came yeah. about and things yeah. like that. Um, but that's part of the problem is, you know, and then they have, yeah, all these franchises that just yeah. keep going and what's depressing is as you know I'm a screenwriter you know I, I, I've written many scripts and it's the amount of red tape and bureaucracy there's hundreds of thousands of probably original scripts just beautiful sitting ideas there. Right, yeah. all these amazing concepts that no one will you know okay. fund and, and produce and make and you won't see them because they just want to do the safe bet and anyway that right. Don't get, the thing that makes money. Yeah, I don't want to get on a tangent on that. Well, that's the thing. See, now it's starting to kick them in the ass. Right. You know, I think that with Transformers, it just it made money. It made billion dollars. They knew it was absolute shit, but they were like, Michael Bay, woo, make the money. Right. You know? Then right. this one, you know, it made like... The funny thing is it made $500 million. <laughs> Which... Quite a lot. <laughs> but it cost like $250 million to make. Right, so that profit wasn't great. Right, probably not at yeah. all. So... Anyway, we want more original ideas and we want yeah. big concept, big budget, you know, yeah. like, I mean, obviously we love the Marvel movies of and course. things like that, but uh, it would be nice to kind of clear the way for, you know, some really good, good ideas. And 
you know, again, there are certain things I like. Blade Runner, a new Blade. I'd watch that. I, yeah. I mean, we're suckers. So I'll, I'll give them my money. And that's all day honestly long. been like long enough. On in a in a, we're coming into it. Obviously, we have a new generation here that that where you can redo that film and um, redo it well. But there are definitely some films that you just you, you should leave them alone. Yeah, like you know? why did you make the Karate Kid with Jaden Smith? Oh, good lord. Yeah. I mean, why? Why? You know, see, why? that was that was depressing. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, so much sacrilegious. Yeah, it really is. Anyway, okay, good. Yeah. I think we're winding down. Yeah. Um, That's a good review. Yeah, we might actually post this, you know, for a couple of people to listen to. This is like obviously very rough and raw, but I think we had a good banter yeah, there actually. We good. just kind of went on the roll, and and that's the whole purpose of this podcast. Really, is we're we're truly genuinely passionate about films. Big time. Yeah, and I you know I think the idea is we won't stick to an exact format, but we'll go over new movies. We'll go over films that you know we're excited about. Uh, things Quizzes, we're done, yeah, things we're disappointed with. Yeah. yeah, I want you to kind of you know maybe you'll quiz me, maybe I'll. You know, try and increase your knowledge more and more, and exactly. just kind of go back and forth. And um... and we're also open to ideas from people who want to listen to us, or people from Tony's Facebook page, hmm. um, what they really would love to hear about. Or you know, we've he recently did a really brilliant survey on like, so what's that movie that you love that other people hate? Things that are interesting. Exactly. So on and on. So we can do my Facebook, yeah. subjects like that, or things that you you know you've uh, you can give us good ideas. Write to Tony, and uh, yeah, that's kind of the idea. We want to have some fun. Yeah. So we're very rough right now. So uh, I guess you can just message. PM me at Tony the Movie Guy on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and you can like that page and share it with your friends and family. And, um, you know, again, I don't even know this is going to go on you know, as an official podcast. We're just kind of, we just decided to just kind of sit down and just start talking. Exactly. And it was actually pretty successful. So, um, yeah, we would love people's thoughts and ideas, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, but this is kind of the idea of the show. Yeah. Yeah? Sounds good. All right. Good night. Hey everyone, thanks so much for listening to the first episode of Tony the Movie Guy, the podcast. We're really excited to bring you more. My name is Daniela, I'm Tony's wife, and I'm also the producer of this podcast. And I wanted to give you a little side note. I'm not obsessed with Schindler's List, like he said, because of the little girl um, that screams goodbye Jews in the movie. Um, There is a funny Louis C.K. bit that I think he was trying to refer to, and um, it's hilarious, and I encourage you to look it up so maybe you see what he's talking about. Um, But yeah, no, Schindler's List is a great movie. That's not why I like it. Um, I also wanted to um, give you guys the email again so you can write to us, give us your ideas, your comments, your criticisms. We're welcoming everything. And that is Tony the Movie Guy podcast at gmail.com. And also, you can um, always reach out on our Facebook page, which is Tony the Movie Guy. And lastly, I would like to thank so much Damian Perkins Neptune for composing our awesome theme song. Um, You can follow him on Instagram at Damian Perkins Neptune. And also he's on uh, YouTube, Damian Perkins Neptune. So please follow him on all social media, subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's really, really awesome. And we're really thankful um, to have him compose this awesome theme song. I'm so stoked about it. Um, I'm really excited to bring you guys more episodes, and we will very shortly. Please write to us, let us know your thoughts, and you'll hear from us soon. Okay, bye-bye.